next time here. I'm joined uh, with uh, Jocelyn and uh, Todd, and uh, we went to the Halifax Beer Fest uh, last night. We uh, we went to the sixth uh, Halifax Seaport Beer Fest, and we did um, the as I said the Friday evening session here. Uh, there's also the Saturday afternoon and the Saturday evening session, but we want just want to give you uh, a bit of a, a recap of last night. So how the how this uh, stream is going to go is we're going to give our top three beers of the show, uh, and then we'll have our top surprises uh, during uh, the tasting session and one of the disappointments uh, that we had here. And then we'll. Uh, cap that off with some of the food uh, pairings that was also available during the show and just the overall vibe of the show for those who haven't uh, been to it yet. So, gentlemen, it was a beautiful uh, Friday, summer, August evening compared to today. It's cloudy, overcast, a little bit of rain here. So, Yeah, good, uh, good call on going last night instead of today. Exactly. Definitely, yeah. So uh, let's start with uh, the top three in no particular order, or you know, let's start with number three. Uh, basically, let's start with uh, now. These are the ones in our top three that uh, we focus mainly on IPAs during the show. There was a nice mix. There was about 200 beers. About 60% were craft brewers uh, from uh, uh, from Europe, from Quebec, Ontario, Maine, and also the Maritimes. Uh, so we're we focus more on the IPAs. So this kind of made the basis of our top three this way. Uh, towards the end of our tasting session, we kind of just grabbed uh, whatever was left there that we wanted to try. So <laughs> yeah. All right. So number three was the uh, Sabago Fries Leap IPA from Maine. Uh, this was a uh, it's an American uh, IPA style, six percent, and they're from. Uh, around the main uh, Portland area of Maine. Uh, I like this one a lot. This was one of the ones that had a very nice uh, finish to it, a little bit different from some of the more sharper uh, IPAs that we were trying. Yeah, I'll tell you, it's um, um, you, you have to know that our top two were really amazing to have passed this one, because this was a really, really good IPA. Um, I'd call it more of an uh, of an easy drinking IPA. Um, it's it's not super high in alcohol. It's not super high in hoppiness. It's not super high in bitterness. Um, it's kind of more well rounded. Um, really nice, uh, really nice beer. Something you can uh, you can try on uh, you can try on a on on a hot summer's day easily. You know, it's not it wouldn't overpower uh, anything. It's really well balanced. Yeah, for sure. It was a very easy drinking beer for, uh, was it 6.2%? I believe it was a 6% beer. Yep. Uh, no, six, it says 6.2 on the uh, brochure, Yeah. but on their, but on their website, uh, uh, they indicate uh, 6%. So, still, yeah. was it? So, uh, Actually, yeah. I'm just looking at the website now, Jim, and they uh, they do say 6.2 here. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, they've been making this beer for a while. Eh? It's uh, they say on on the history of this beer for for their brewery that it was first brewed in '98. So clearly, it's something that has had success for them. Definitely, definitely. Uh, the uh, number two uh, would be the uh, Spearhead Hawaiian Pale Ale. Yeah, and uh, and if anybody's watched our recap from last year, Jim and I, um, it was definitely my favorite from last year. So I was kind of excited to uh, to try it again, and we were lucky enough to talk. Jim, you said he was the president of the brewery, I believe, right? Yeah, yeah, he he's the uh, main dude at Spearhead here, and just ironically, I was watching a video from another beer tuber there, uh, Albino Rhino, and he was talking. With him at the brewery about the new brew, the Moroccan brew that they were uh, starting or, or, or getting in the process to, to brew. So uh, he recognized me from uh, from our video from last year. So That's right. that that started the conversation there, and he explained to us a lot of the changes that they did to the process of this year's Hawaiian Pale Ale. They they've kind of extended some of the the process with yeast and when to put in the uh, the pineapple and and some of the other 
beer making aspects there that I kind of kind of yeah, and and he was telling us that they changed the filtration as well just to remove a lot of the you know of the sediment afterwards. But uh, but one thing they didn't change is that they still are brewing this with um, with some pineapple juice, and this is for me the the really incredible thing about this beer is that the pineapple juice shows through and you actually taste the pineapple uh, but but the sweetness is not really there in in a in in an off-putting way it's it's just just such a subtle pineapple taste and it's really really wonderful yeah it was a great beer I, I came a little late to the conversation there I was off getting a something to eat what we'll talk about later so I didn't really get the uh, Full effect of the beer till about the second half of my drink because I was trying to uh, cleanse my palate. <laughs> That's right. So I'm just holding up the bottle here for anybody in the, the Halifax area that uh, want to pick one up. There, they're available at Premier Wine and Spirits. So uh, this is a, right here on the label: six percent ABV and uh, sixty IBUs. Uh, as you said, it goes great with some uh, great some spicy dishes. Uh, you know that little sweetness from the pineapple. Um, I did notice a bit of a change in the taste compared to last year, so that's why I picked up the bottles today so that I can try some uh, tomorrow. Um, yeah, I, I kind of I remember yesterday when we were talking about after we had it, um, and and fortunately it was early on in our drinking session, I guess. So so we were a bit. Uh, a bit more objective, I think, but but I I remember define or, or or talking about it as as more well rounded and more refined compared to last year's version, yeah. but absolutely just phenomenal. And, and again, I'm shocked that this didn't take uh, that this didn't take number one. I know, and uh, it's a good the good thing is that this is available uh, in Nova Scotia in kind of small quantities. So definitely for people who uh, want to try something a little bit different, definitely. Spearhead Hawaiian Pale Ale, give this a try. So, awesome brew. Uh, and then the the top three or the number one in number our one, yeah. uh, thing, which b blew us away. We kind of wasn't expect. I kind of missed it on the program. I didn't even see it, and I kind of forgot that Premier Wines and Spirits also carries this for uh, has been carrying this for a little while, and uh, which is the uh, Brewdog Hardcore IPA. And as anybody who reads anything about beer knows, there's a lot of hype about this beer right now. A lot of hype, and and it's kind of hard to find, and uh, and a lot of people are really trying to get their hands on it. So you know, sometimes with hype comes disappointment. Not in this case. No, definitely not. This was a beer that all three of us, after we took the initial sip, we're like, whoa, this is something. A little bit different, and this was right after we had tasted Spearhead, and all of a sudden we're like, "Oh my God, Spearhead just got knocked knocked off a pig." I know and, you uh, said that. I remember that. <laughs> but uh, it, there's something to it. It's you know, it's, it's very uh, full-bodied taste to it. I think there was a lot of flavors going on. Uh, you had that you know that hop uh, bitterness to it. So, and it's also a nine percent beer. So let's not uh, forget about that. Yeah, and um, yeah. You, you you know the the Fry's Leap IPA, we talked about how how well balanced it was. This one is as well, but in a very different way because every single component of flavor in it is is amplified. Everything yeah. is really really at the forefront. It's really strong. It's really hoppy. It's really bitter. But it's ex and and I think what balances all of these really strong things with it is that it's extremely fruity, yes. without being sweet. It's remarkable in that way. Yeah. Todd, did you sure. find the same thing? Yeah, it it really stood out last night. Uh, I think it was the only international beer we tried. I think. Yeah, it was. But, uh, but yeah, it's it's just it was spectacular, and uh, the guy that was giving it out there, the rapper or whatever, was saying, you know, they had to open a new factory just to try to keep up with demand. So that's kind of uh, you know the proof was in the pudding kind of thing. So to keep you know to have that demand and sustain it, um, you know, it's well deserved. Uh, definitely. So I'll be enjoying this uh, tomorrow. I'm going to let this chill in the fridge here for a little bit longer here. 
still the price for a bottle relatively reasonable is about three three fifty. Uh, didn't quite notice. Same thing for the uh, Spearhead IPA. So yeah, you, know, you know, well worth it because this this is truly truly a, a phenomenal beer. It's 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 really in the it, it stood out in a class of its of its own at uh, for you know for what for the beers we tasted anyways. Exactly, and just to recap for people who, because uh, we do have a number of people watching here, uh, we focus mainly on IPAs during this beer festival. Yeah. So these are our top three uh, of the IPAs that, or pale ales that kind of said, wow, this is a little different from what we've been tasting here. So, so again, just to recap, we had the Sabago Fries Leaf IPA, uh, then we had the Spearhead Hawaiian Pale Ale, and then Brewdog Hardcore IPA. So that goes with our top three. Now let's move on to uh, our surprises of the show. These are uh, a couple beers that when we tasted it, we didn't really know what to expect, but we were very pleasantly surprised by it and made a note of it. So, yeah, and they were outside of our kind of uh, tasting zone of uh, going after IPAs yesterday. So Exactly, and this was towards the end, I think maybe a, with an hour left uh, in the session there. Yeah. And I'll explain more how the session works uh, with the, to the people here a little bit later. So, anyway, let's start with the first one here from uh, Trou du Diable, uh, La Chèvre Tabarnak, which is a uh, 5.3 uh, traditional ale. I think that's uh, the style here uh, from uh, Quebec. And this was a very nice, light, refreshing beer. Very yeah, and nice. it's, uh, it's actually brewed with rye. Um, which made it interesting and 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 gave it an extremely light color. I mean, it was uh, it was light, light, light blonde um, color. And you know, you, you, whenever you see a really light colored beer, you expect something tasteless. You know, a bit like Coors Light or something. Um, this is not what we got. It's a, um, it, it's it's light in color, but it's it's uh, it's got a lot of taste. It's extremely citru citrusy. And it's got just enough contrasting bitterness to offset the citrus notes in there. Um, I, I thought it was remarkable. Uh, great beer to, to drink on a summer day. Exactly, yeah, I agree. And uh, this was one of the few beers that we went twice to go get some more because we wanted to get the second opinion. Yes. And, and I think maybe a third opinion too. So... <laughs> And and just to remind, uh, probably show people what you get when you uh, come in or you want you go to the uh, beer fest. Tickets were about forty five dollars or forty dollars depending on the session, and you were given uh, this glass right here, and uh, they would fill it up depending on the vendor and how generous they were. About you know a third, yeah, about a, know, third. a third, you know, something like that, enough to give you a good idea of the beer. Um, so. When we went second or third time to try this Shiv uh, Tabarnak, then, you know, we kind of knew it was something kind of special for this one. So I was very pleased with that. They don't have this at Premier Wines and Spirits. Uh, I didn't see it. I uh, might have to ask for it, but uh, this was a good one. Definitely. Yeah, this, uh, this comes from uh, Shawinigan, Quebec. Shawinigan. And uh, this, I love this brewery. They have awesome labels. They have yes. awesome names for their beers. They got the Shawinigan Handshake. For anybody in Canada, you'll know what that means. Uh, they got a good sense of humor with the artwork. We'll well, yeah, the I mean, yeah, no, go ahead. No, I was going to say, once uh, this live stream is done, it's going to get posted on uh, YouTube automatically. I'll add all the description with all the links and the beers and uh, so that people can, can see uh, what I mean by that. So it's great. Yeah, stuff. And, and you were saying you know, they, they've got a lot of sense of humor. <laughs> The name of this one, uh, you know, Shiv is apparently. I was reading. It's a, it's a, it's an insult uh, over in Belgium, uh, over in Brussels. Um, so that's an interesting one. And and Tabarnak, as any Canadian would know, is a good old Quebec swear word. So that's right. <laughs> La Shiv Tabarnak. La Shiv Tabarnak. Um, so that was uh, one of the surprises we saw at the show. The other surprise, which was another brew from Quebec, which is from uh, Bill Boquet, L'Archange, which is uh, Archangel. This is a uh, German uh, Heifenweizen style beer, 5%. Uh, this was really surprising. I really enjoyed this. Well, the first thing is that, you know, as, as we always do, is we take a little sniff of it to see the smells, and immediately it smelled like bananas. Yep. 
Actually, Todd, you said it best. What, what did you say to, it smelled and tasted like? Uh, I forget. <laughs> you said, you said a, a banana popsicle or something like that? I think that was our friend Jim. Oh, it was Jim? Okay. Uh, okay. Now, I was going to give you credit for that, Todd. Oh, yeah, I was, I, I, I was, I, too. I was too. You well, always no, had yeah, more to yeah. drink than me. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, for, for anybody who's ever had a, ban a banana-flavored popsicle, this beer, to me, tasted just like it. It was a nice banana, yeasty, big bread. Yes, yes. Stuff that you would find uh, in a white-style beer. But it was very pleasant, very light, um, way more pleasant than any of the other whites that we have uh, available locally, which is the Garrison Nitwit and the uh, Unibrou Blanche de Chambly, which is another beer from Quebec. Yeah. This one here was, La Canche was very, very uh, easy going, easy drinking. I really enjoyed this one. You, yeah. you know, one thing about white beers and, and you know there's a proliferation right now of white beers everywhere um, a, a lot of them use spice to to give them a bit of taste um, coriander is something that that you see very often and often when they use the coriander seed it gives the beers um, a kind of a orange citrusy taste this one didn't have any any uh, spice at all so no, so no. you got really the pure character of the of the wheat and the yeast coming through, and and it was it was beautiful. Uh, it was fantastic. Uh, this yeah, five percent beer. It was a fantastic brew. I again, this was one of the surprises uh, from the show. There, really enjoyed that one. Yeah, it was great. Yeah, yeah. great. Yeah. Uh, that's it for the surprises of the show. So the next thing that we have are the disappointments of the show. So these are ones that. We thought we would expect more from, but we were just a little bit disappointed as compared to the other IPAs that we've had. Yes. So the one that made uh, our list for that is from Flying Monkey from uh, Ontario, the Smash Bomb IPA. We were actually quite disappointed in this one. Oh, very disappointed. Um, and, you know, I, I don't know, thinking about it now uh, and, and thinking back on yesterday, I, I'm kind of hoping and, and we'll give them the benefit of the doubt that maybe we got a bad batch or that the or that the bottles were not in great shape after travel. I don't know. It was it was awful. It was truly awful. It, it smelled, I, I remember my description, and this was, uh, you know, it's, it's not even uh, a, a description that was tempered by alcohol. This was early, early in our uh, in our session, and I described the smell and the taste as cat's pee. Not good. <laughs> no, not good at all. And good. what what made it uh, concerning uh, is was that last year, if you were on the Twitter, everybody was raving about this beer. Kind of reason why I needed to taste it because they ran out before we got to it, if you remember. So when we got there, first thing we went, went, went to the Ontario tent and like, okay, give me some of that smash mouth before it, go, it, it all yeah. goes. But as you said, it was very disappointing. There was something wrong with that. Now they do offer the bottle at Premier Wines down in Halifax, and I do have a bottle of that. Uh, I will give it a second try. Maybe, as you said, maybe there was something wrong with the, with the bottle, the transport, the batch. But it was not, compared to all the other IPAs that we tried, because we tried close to nine or ten IPAs uh, during the evening. Yeah, easily, uh, yeah. That one was just disappointing, you know, for what the hype was. And, you know, it was still... Dr drinkable but there was just something missing from it yeah I, I wouldn't even honestly um, what I tasted yesterday I, I just wouldn't drink it again I, I wouldn't even finish a bottle if I had it open it it, it was that off-putting to me not not good at all Todd did you uh, remember anything uh, from from that smash mouth or yeah it's, it's like Jocelyn says there was something off about it whether it was a bad batch or the bottles got left in the sun somewhere too long I, I don't know but I, I can't believe people would rave about that so I think there was something wrong with what we got like, mm. and maybe it was just the bottle we got from because I think we probably were all from the same bottle so yeah, who I guess knows? we won't know but it's, I guess it's worthy of a second, second chance uh, given 
you know, what you were saying with the reviews last year. But, uh, yeah, I was disappointed with it. It was, you know, un not enjoyable. I don't know if I finished it all because it was just, just didn't taste right. No, yeah. it wasn't good. It wasn't good. So those were, uh, that was our disappointment for the beers. Now, uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, you can add a comment in it, and Jocelyn or Todd can check uh, the link uh, to see whether or not uh, there's any comments there. Uh, so let's move on to the other aspects of the show, which is uh, the food. Because so there was not only the beer element of the beer festival, there was also the taste of Nova Scotia food. So we had a number of food vendors there, and they made some very special dishes beyond the hot dog and fries that uh, you were able to choose. So let's start with the first one that we stopped at. Well, actually, you guys stopped at one. Yeah. First. Which yeah, I did. No, you didn't, right? I didn't try it at all. So uh, explain to us what you tried first. Well, they were beautiful, beautiful oysters from uh, Sober Island. Um, kind of ironic. ironic. Ironic to have Sober Island in a, at a beer fest, but whatever. Um, they were really nice oysters. They were super fresh. They were shucking them uh, right on the spot there. Um, they're actually on the small side for um, you know for for oysters, uh, which which I enjoy you know because sometimes you get really big oysters and it's a bit bit too much, and they had a choice of uh, a choice of different toppings for them, including the one for me that was the standout is they they had made a, a, a little um, kind of vinegary cucumbery with a little bit of spice um, topping for this, and it was really really cool. Yeah, they were. Uh, it, it's nice. It was a nice local company. I don't think I've ever had uh, Nova Scotia oysters. Not that I'm aware of. So this was kind of something new for me. Um, I just had mine straight up with nothing on it. One of them I threw hot sauce on because I love hot sauce. But uh, very, very good. Very fresh. Yeah. Very, very tasty. Um, now, uh, kind of I was no, I was gonna say, uh, you know. Uh, from the oysters, you know, you can find them and buy some of them, or some of the other farmed oysters that you have uh, around the Yarmouth area of the province. Uh, a nice recipe for that would be to open up the face of the oyster, uh, put a little layer of brie cheese and a little piece of bacon, and then you put broil that under uh, the oven for a few minutes and shuck that down afterwards. That's a very nice uh, dish. And also, or you can have oyster shooters. You have a nice glass of white, maybe Lacadie Blanc wine from uh, Nova Scotia, and you just put a piece of oyster in, inside your glass and shoot that down. Yeah, or, or with beer. Or with beer. We should try that with beer. Sure. Pineapple pale ale, maybe. <laughs> Ooh, that might be interesting. So uh, those oysters were $5. For and three, yeah. For three, yeah. And uh, you guys will recommend that to uh, to anybody. Oh yeah, it's, uh, I mean that's a decent price for oysters, and uh, and they were super super fresh and and really you know tasted you know just slightly briny and just just wonderful. Definitely, yeah. Awesome. So the next uh, the next thing that we had uh, to eat was from Fid Resto, which is what was the bombing. Or am I pronouncing that wrong? I don't yeah, the bon mi, the bon mi. You, you got it, you got the it. Bon mi, which is a pulled pork sandwich, but the sandwich, the bread part is a, a warmed up French baguette yeah, with a, shredded carrot and onions and a, a lot of chili. Oh. <laughs> and some oh. sauce. Oh, that chili. It, it killed me. I mean, it was so good, but man, I just, uh, just kind of erupt when I eat that stuff. The uh, the funny <laughs> the funny part was that the first few bites you didn't get any of the heat, but then the, the bottom half of the sandwich you just got this uh, nuclear explosion in your mouth in terms of heat, and for me it gave me a hiccup reaction. So trying to go to the beer tent asking for something to wash it down and yeah, no, doing some hiccups five yeah. minutes after they opened the gates there wasn't uh, <laughs> too, uh, too pleasant. Hey, but, but too. You know, if you don't know, if anybody that's watching has never been to FID, 
Um, it's one of our top restaurants in the city, and and, and actually the you, you know the two owners, uh, Dennis Johnston and uh, his wife, were there uh, serving up the banh mi's, and uh, you know a great way because because some people sometimes don't want to or can't afford you know a a nice meal at a restaurant, even though fit is not uh, overly pricey. But a great way to enjoy their food is to just go to their back door and get the pad thai, which they make, and you they just serve it out of the back door of the kitchen and it's for 10 bucks taxes in and I'm telling you you'll never have a better have a better pad thai. I I go when it rains so that I feel like a schlub when I knock on the back door next to the recycle and trash bins I would like some pad thai please. Yeah, My yeah. little 10 dollars. That's how you do it. So. Yeah, and you just walk in the kitchen and you you watch as they're you know they're prepping other food for the restaurant they're just making the pad thai right there for you. Uh, right on the spot, and they, they're serving it to you warm and ready to go. It's phenomenal. Todd, what do you think about the uh, the sandwich? The bar me? Uh, I've had it before, but I have to say, far and away last night was was just delicious. It was just done, the meat was just done right for me. And uh, I think, Jocelyn, I think you told me what it, what it was exactly. It's a colonial French Vietnamese fusion, isn't that right? Yeah. It's, uh, Kind of a Vietnamese dish and a baguette. Yeah, you're you're right because it, it uh, you know Vietnam is is an old uh, French colony. Indochine was what what it was called for the French, right? And when the French colonized uh, Vietnam, they they brought a lot of their traditions there, and and certainly the baguette uh, has remained. But then they took some of the flavors, and the banh mi developed that way, uh, and it's always served in a really really traditional French baguette. And and that's kind of the fusion aspect, but but you know the fusion is not there anymore because they've adopted it as their own. But uh, it, it comes from that colonial era. It's kind of cool. Right. So just yeah, to... so yeah, extremely spicy. I warn you, if you're not a spice person, don't even try it. <laughs> I love spice, so it's not an issue. But yeah. Uh, you know, let's let's just recap the ingredients for the people. So you have a warmed up French baguette for your yep. for for the bread for the sandwich part. You have a, a slab of pulled pork or ribs or whatever it was. Uh, you have shredded carrot. You have some white onions. But they're, they're uh, more than just shredded, eh? They're, they're, they're kind of they're lightly pickled, too. Oh, lightly pickled. Okay. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And maybe a little bit of lettuce or cilantro or something like that. Some yeah, green. yeah, cilantro would be, would be in there. And uh, some actual red chili peppers uh, yeah. shredded somewhere in the sandwich as a surprise. <laughs> a little bit of sauce. <laughs> yeah, and and you discovered the surprise pretty quick. Oh, that was <laughs> and that too was five dollars at the show. Fantastic. Oh, yeah. Look, yeah. look, four. I think. Was it four? Um, I forget. I think, I think it was four dollars. So you know what? It was it, you, you know what? It was four dollars. Yeah. It was and worth everything. Yeah, most everything was five, but for some reason they were charging four, and they could have easily charged five. I, I don't know why, but. Yeah, yeah, it, it it was worth at least five in my book. <laughs> uh, true. And the last thing that we tried uh, out for food was from uh, Sage Scanway, which is the chicken taco for $5. This was a soft taco shell with some pulled uh, chicken uh, or shredded chicken with um, some stuff that made up the taco in uh, lots of sauce because that was a messy uh, it taco. It was messy, but man, was it good, eh? There was a little bit, uh, there was a little bit of uh, peanut flavored sauce in there, um, and and that really gave it a nice flavor. There was cilantro in there, I believe, and uh, and yeah, just uh, just a nice, nice uh, kind of um, um, Asian tasting taco a bit. It was great. Yeah, it's, uh, it was nice. It's nice seeing them make it right before you too. It wasn't yeah. like a prep thing. It was, you know. And it was delicious, but messy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so there was that. There were some other dishes, but those were the ones that we tried out. Uh, Bramosa, I think they had some pizza, but we stayed away from the, the pizza stuff because, well, you can have pizza anytime, but we wanted something original for that. Now, that, w that was the beer. That was the food. Uh, for people who uh, didn't want to drink any beer, you could have... Uh, or if you were the designated driver, because after all you are at the beer festival, 
uh, they allowed a $10 bracelet charge to go in and you could have uh, vitamin water or water as you were there. I didn't see too, too many there. Something tells me that the, the Disney drivers kind of dropped off their ride and then went back home and then came back later in the evening. There's nothing more fun, is there, than uh, being stuck in a small area with a whole bunch of drunk people <laughs> and you're being sober. It's yeah, it awesome. was interesting to see how the evening progressed, right, from from people who just walked in and they're excited to uh, to discover the thing to at the end you see a bunch of people that are just sloshed. Oh, yeah, and, and this brings up to our next uh, topic, which is the vibe of the show, because for people who don't know, there are three sessions during the show. There's a Friday night, Saturday afternoon, and a Saturday night. And the sessions are two and a half hours long. And, you know, you go in, you bring in your ticket, you get one of these, and for two and a half hours, you try... Well, I think people try as many as they want. Or, if, or, or they were like me... I had a list with highlighted beers I needed to try and notes and all this other stuff. So, um, <clears throat> so what happened? So the Friday night vibe, younger crowd, they all went to Coors, Keys, Moosehead, Tents. They tried to load up on that, which led to the Ontario, Maine, and Quebec, and maybe some of the international ones, empty. At the beginning, yeah. At the beginning, yeah. 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 And you, you just have to to make your way through the crowd at the at the entrance because that's where all the majors are, right? And, and and honestly, why would you even stop by the majors? And and, and I was just commented to, commenting to Todd yesterday as we were walking in. We just walked in, right? There was a, there was a nice tent. It was very nicely done with Stella Artois, and who hasn't had a Stella? And and honestly, it's a great beer. It's a very good beer, but why would you go there and have yet another one? You know, go enjoy something else. Go try something new, something you've never seen, something you've never tried, and something that you might not even be able to buy again because it's not local. Well, there's, there's several, I think, groups of people that go to these. There's the one like us who are out just to experience and try <coughs> some things. But then, you know, there's some 19, 20-year-olds. They're there just to get pounded as fast as they can. Like a you know, the old brewery tours when you're 19. Yeah, but you know what? It's funny because it's uh, it's 50 bucks to get in with uh, taxes. It's, that, that's not actually for for a 19 or 20 year old that wants wants to get sloshed. It's actually not the cheapest way to do it. Yeah, well, well, you know, it's 40 dollars for a two four now, isn't it? 50 and eight dollars for a beer downtown. Yeah. Good way to kick off a night of dancing, I guess. Is just yeah, that's true. Drink as much as you can for 50 bucks and then drink yeah, water for the rest of the night. But there's a few, uh, what do you call it when the bride goes out to uh, shower? Like, yeah, bridal uh, showers. and Bachelorette yeah. party, there's a few yeah. of those going on, rocking through there. Yeah, there was a few, yeah. Uh, that, and that, that's kind of a reason why I like the, the Friday night stuff, because it's kind of, you see all sorts of faces, there are all sorts of crowds. Well, well also, yeah, just... you, get, you get to see the seer being mobbed by the t Twitter groupies. Oh yeah! I, oh yeah! Josh I, I stand around like sore thumbs. They all gravitate to the hat. It's the hat. Yes, it's the, the hat. chapeau. That's right. the chapeau man. Yeah, the chapeau. Well, we had a lot of uh, Twitter uh, fellow Twitter followers or acquaintances that uh, we meet. We meet in person, and that's the great part about some of these shows in Halifax. So, if you're part of Twitter or some of the other social networks, well, mainly Twitter. Uh, when you run into each other, it's kind of like, hey, you're a real person. You know? <laughs> I've been reading your updates for three years, and there you are. Uh, so it's good. We actually met uh, quite a few people, or I met uh, quite a few people there uh, last night. So it was great. Um, I, I, I'm, I have the hat now. Oh, uh, you have the shuffle? It's all about me now. Yeah, okay, there you go. <laughs> Next video is all about you. So there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, uh, perfect. So, but still, it still it was still very uh, navigable in terms of getting through to the tents. There wasn't really a lot of lineups, regardless. Uh, no. It was pretty packed. So, it, people who were like kind of afraid of going or might get mobbed or anything like that, uh, I don't think you have anything to worry about. Basically, it will work better if you have a designated driver or you take the cab out, just go, 
you're going to have a good time, you'll probably run into somebody you know, and uh, enjoy some good beers when it comes down to it. Yeah, it's a, it's a great event. Honestly, it's a great event, and, and we were lucky again yesterday with the weather, a bit like we were last year. You know, it's uh, today's not, not quite as nice, but it's, it's not horrible out there. I mean, you know, it's just a slight drizzle here and there. It wouldn't be, wouldn't be too bad. Yeah. As, as any kind of event, the, the people watching, you know, is, is a big part of it because there's every facet and walk of life walking around there to kind of uh, look at and enjoy and ridicule at their leisure. <laughs> but, uh, there was you know, a bit of weirdness here and there, eh? Yeah, but it, it's cool. It's cool to see people. It's cool. I like doing that. That's one of my favorite things to do is just people watch. So, um, yeah, just uh, just kind of sitting back, sipping on your beer and watching. Uh, yeah. Sections of Halifax walk through. It's pretty cool. Well, like as as I said the other night, you get your serious face. As you get older, for men, you get your serious face. But inside, your inner voice is completely different story. So, yeah. uh, and that's why the evening sessions are so much fun. But anyway, I just want to give uh, some people some uh, additional stats about we we did mention there were two hundred beers. Uh, there were a number of gluten free. Uh, products there, double from last year. Yeah. There's also a, a number of ciders that were uh, available, double from last year. There's actually a couple that were making their debut today, Saturday. Uh, so uh, how many of them we'll see in the NSLC or Premier Wines left to be seen. But uh, I did I did get to try a cider last night, which was the uh, Bulwark traditional from uh, Muin Wines and Craft Cider. I think, I can't remember if they're local or not, but uh, definitely Canadian, I think. Uh, I'll have to look, I didn't get a chance to look them up there, but that was a nice little cider. Because uh, I believe Ontario, there's an increase in cider producers, I think. Yeah, it seems to be a trend that's uh, that's coming back. I'm, I'm not a big fan, but uh, it certainly is a trend. And the other thing too is that uh, we took we completely ignored the uh, local uh, brew brewers uh, because we can get the, their beers anytime. But uh, and the people, <laughs> yeah, and, and we do. do all the time. But we uh, do all the time. But Garrison uh, and Rock Bottom were there, right? Eh? Garrison was there because one of the organizers is the president of uh, Garrison. Uh, Moosehead was there. Uh, the PI Brewing Company, otherwise known as Ganan House. Uh, they were there. Uh, we did try their Beach Chair Lager, which was, I think, is a rebranded uh, beer that they have. Very light, 4.5% lager. Actually, pretty good. Comes in the can, pretty nice. Uh, Hell Bay Brewing, uh, which we're only pouring on Saturday today. We didn't get a chance, but uh, we did try their English ale before. We've done a review. We've done a review. Yeah. And uh, it's good stuff. The, he was supposed to. Uh, Debut a smoke rye ale uh, today. So yeah, I really uh, wish I could have tried that. Uh, yeah, and that was one of the brews that we was was a surprise for us, which was one of the rye ales. So maybe we need to make the drive out to uh, Cherry Hill to to go see them there. Yes. Uh, Pickaroons from Fredericton, uh, they were there. Uh, Pump House Brewery from Moncton, they were there. And as uh, Jocelyn said, Rock Bottom Brew Pub here in Halifax, they were there with some casks or some firkins. Uh, yeah. So each session, you had a keg of specific beer. And uh, Rogue's Roost, which is another brew pub here in Halifax, uh, they were pouring some of their stuff. They had their IPA, raspberry wheat, and their porter, which is uh, their top three. Yeah, actually, uh, I said rock bottom, but I meant Rogue's Roost. I, at rock bottom, I don't think we're there. I No, I saw their banner. Oh, did I you? Know. Okay, I missed yeah, that. Yeah, I, I think yeah. part of what happened was by the time we got, because they were uh, huddled with the international uh, Exactly, people. yeah. I see, so I missed that. Yeah, and uh, they may have run out before by the time we got there, because we got there kind of sort of the tail end of the session. Yeah. Uh, as we're working our way through that. So, anyway, uh, for those watching live on Saturday, there's one more session uh, tonight, Saturday night. Uh, tickets at the door only. I believe it's going to be 45 bucks plus taxes. Uh, definitely try it out. If not, wait for next year. Uh, for the most part, a good chunk of these are available at NSLC or uh, mostly the ones from Quebec you can get at Premier Wines and Spirits in downtown Halifax. Ontario is kind of hit and miss, but 
uh, I'm sure with demand they'll start to, to come out. So, uh, boys, we'll just leave it at, at that. We do have a number of people that were watching throughout the show. Um, I haven't been able to check uh, the comments, but uh, we'll no, reply. Uh, sorry, Jim, there's no comments that I can see. No there. And then not yet, just, none yet. None yet? Okay. We don't see anything in the Twitter feed, or I don't see anything in the Google+. Plus. So... Anyway, if any questions do come up, we'll uh, reply to them. Uh, once the video gets re-uploaded on uh, YouTube, I'll add the description, add all the links to all the beers that we've talked about today and some other stuff. So, anyway, enjoy your Saturday, everybody, and uh, we'll see you next time. Cheers. See you later.